Hello, this is Professor Langdana at Rutgers Business School. I'm a professor here in the Finance and Economics Department, and I also run the Executive MBA program here, known as the Powerhouse. So, for all of you visiting us for this video blog, welcome to the Powerhouse. Um, today I'm going to be spending the next few minutes discussing the role of interest rates on economic activity. We'll discuss something called the liquidity trap, and this is really very, very important. Um, this is one of the few things you really must need to understand about central banks and the Fed and interest rates. So very simply, and by the way, we won't resort to any equations here, no math. This is going to be under four minutes or thereabouts, and just fundamental intuition. Just bedrock common sense is what we'll be talking about here, something you can take away and use. So here we go. To jumpstart the economy, to create jobs, to have growth, the Fed or the central bank of your choice, it could be the Reserve Bank of India, the People's Bank of China, the European Central Bank, take your pick. The central bank lowers interest rates. And by the way, how banks lower and raise interest rates, that's another video blog for another time. So that they lower interest rates and things start happening. Good things happen, or they're supposed to happen. You know, housing picks up, it's cheaper to borrow money, so there's more housing, there's more demand for housing, there's more construction. Businesses can borrow more since interest rates have been lowered. So there are new labs, office buildings, new capital investment, more jobs, the economy grows, everyone's happy. And that's the simple, publicly accepted story. And as we will see in a few minutes, it's dangerously incomplete and scarily misleading, especially to policymakers. By the way, the opposite is true too. To slow down the economy, the central bank raises interest rates. So now it's harder to borrow, more expensive to borrow. So housing slows down, uh, capital investment slows down, buildings, plants, offices, labs, fewer jobs, economy slows down. And later on in another blog, we will see why you would actually want things to slow down. Well, the short answer is if there's a bubble, if you want to calm down or soft land your economy. Anyway, so here we are now back. We are lowering interest rates to jumpstart the economy. And policymakers often believe that this is a magic bullet. You do this, you lower rates, and everything starts happening. Good things happen. This is very rarely the case nowadays. This would only, only, only work, and this is a fundamentally important point in this video blog. This would only work if confidence is high. If borrowers feel that by the time the new project, the new house, the new investment that they have borrowed for comes online, if the future is bleak at that point in time, there is no point in borrowing. If I was an, if I was an investor, even if I could borrow 20 million, let's say, for a new factory or a plant or a lab at, say, 1.5% today, two years from now, if the taxes were still going to be high, if regulation was still going to be crippling like it is in this country right now, this is 2015, and if the global uncertainty was still high, trade wars, taxes, Europe, Russia, China, name it, then there's no point, I wouldn't borrow. And so the point here is that you can lower interest rates till the cows come home, but nothing will happen if confidence is low. And this is known as a liquidity trap, a liquidity trap. So a liquidity trap is you lower interest rates, nothing happens. So you're pressing the switch, nothing happens. You keep pressing the switch, nothing happens. And so you might wonder, well, okay, big deal, so nothing happens. So, so what's so dangerous about that? Oh, it didn't work. All right, well, we tried. What makes this so dangerous, and please note, this was tried in Japan over the last 20 years or so. Nothing happened. This was tried in the United States since 2008 nothing happened and now this is just being tried in Europe so now we are here this is late July 2015 the Europeans are going to embark on a policy of lowering interest rates dramatically keeping them low for a long time and mark my words nothing will happen liquidity trap so what's so dangerous about it very simply when you lower interest rates what you're doing is you're increasing the supply of money interest rates are the price of money right so when you want to lower the price of anything in life you increase the supply of the thing to lower the price of this video camera i'm looking at what if i cranked out 20,000 of them every day prices would fall to lower the 
your salary? Well, what if people like you were graduating from universities and colleges at 100 times the rate that they are now? Salaries would fall. So they print more money. To lower the price of money, to lower interest rates, central banks basically print more money. And I would never have said print money, but since 2008, I'm afraid that's what we've been doing. In fact, most economies have been doing that. So we increase the money and we flood the money with liquidity. And that is the big concern. So we have flooded the economy, the global economy right now, with pieces of paper to lower interest rates and nothing really happened because of the liquidity trap. And that money is sitting there. That's the money that's flowing into the stock market. And stock prices are basically going to rise um, really for no real reason, pun intended. The, in, in, in other words, long-term sustained stock price increases happen when things are being made, people are being employed, <laughs> simply put. This time now, they're being pushed up by liquidity, the money. The money has to flow somewhere. You know, when you print money, I'm a civil engineer by my undergraduate training, so hence the civil engineering analogies. So when you print money, it's like water. You know, it's like water has to flow somewhere. You, you release the dam, you let the water through, it flows somewhere. So this money, which is the water, is flowing up into the stock market and pushing stock prices up, which are now driven by liquidity, which is a fancy expression for driven by printing money, and um, maybe in the housing market. And the Europeans are going to be doing this, so some of their liquidity will come here, and we should see that pushing up stock prices, which are going to be going up, really, because a lot of money is chasing a few stocks. And so if you're in the stock market, this is 2015, enjoy the ride, I am, but keep an eye um, on the lifeboats. If you're on the cruise of the stock market fun, then book your cabin near the lifeboats because um, this rally is driven really by liquidity. So that's it, liquidity trap, um, stock market rally, and um, a little hint of the global situation. Thank you for joining me here at the powerhouse and I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.